Hey, what's up guys? So today I'll be showing off my new car. All right, so I'm going to be uh, starting off with showing the engine. So this has the 3.8 V6. And to open it, you just open it like every other car. Let's go in here, pull the hood latch. And the hood pops up. Should I keep that in there? I'm going to keep that in there. But anyway, that's a little blooper for you right there. So you open up the hood and it's like really awkward opening it because like the switch is like all the way over to the side here. And then you just work your way over. And here's the engine here. So yeah, as I said, this is the 3.8 V6 and it's a very solid engine. It's one of uh, General Motors' best engines ever made, known for its like fuel efficiency, reliability and stuff. It's a it's a really great car with this engine and everything. It's Gets me from point A to point B. Doesn't burn a billion gallons of gas. It's, it, I like it a lot. It's very reliable. All right, and now before we go into the inside of the car, I'm gonna open up the trunk real quick. So to open up the trunk, you just put the key in because I don't have a key fob yet. But if you have the key fob, then you just get the key fob and push the button. So yeah, there's a lot of trunk space in here. Like raise the family. There's also a first aid kit back here too. You gotta like just pop this off. I also have a tire repair kit because my tire was having an issue a little bit ago. But just a first aid kit in here. I don't, I don't actually know if this came with the car or not. No, it doesn't look like it did because it has a Nissan Altima on it. But yeah, it, has a first, it came with the first aid kit, which is pretty nice. I'm probably never gonna use it, but it's cool to have it. And that's why it looks like the original one too. That looks like a that looks like an old Altima there. That's probably from like 2003, 2004. So yeah, just close that. You just. Have to somehow get in like the little slots there and eventually it'll shut. All right, and to get into the car, you just unlock it. I'm just gonna unlock all the doors so I can get in the back seat a little bit later on too. So you just keep that, you just pull it all the way to the right, like just turn to the right all the way and it'll open up all the doors. And of course to get in, you can do like this. Oh my God, that's so cool. So this car I got, I got it with 104,000 miles and I already put like 3,000 miles on it because I drive too much. But uh, yeah, thing already turned off, but it, it's, I put a lot of miles on, so I gotta stop driving around so much. So, here's my gauge cluster here. I think it looks so cool. Like, this is, like, one of the reasons why I got the car, and also because I like Pontiacs and General Motors cars, because I'm a nerd. And this also has an updated radio, too. This is, um, it's a Kenwood radio. It has Bluetooth and all that cool stuff with a USB and aux. You can just Bluetooth your phone to it, and everything will be nice. Also got a lot of storage in here, which is just masks and a bunch of chargers. And the glove box, I don't even think I have it unlocked right now because it always falls open. Oh no, it is open. Alright, and that just has my uh, owner's manual in there, which I'll pull that out. Cause I, like, cause look at that, that looks so sick. So in this top pocket here, there's actually a little book in here at first, but I just put my uh, insurance and registration in there just so it would be easier for me to like get it and not like get it messed up in there. But the book itself is kind of like boring looking on the outside. It's just, it's kind of just a regular owner's manual, but... Hey, I mean, it got a, got a pretty cool cover on it, though. It says Pontiac, and it looks very, like, 2000s. This car also has cruise control. Of course, you got the wipers there, and you just push that button for the washer fluid. And you got the turn signal there, and this little knob here turns the fog lights. If you just push it up like that, it'll just turn them on, and it'll just click back. Also got the sunglasses thing up here. And I got my uh, ugly driving glasses, but, I mean, it makes it so I don't have to shut my eyes while I'm driving, so that's nice. And here's the mirror here. You got some uh, fancy lights on there. And there's me. Whoa, so cool. All right, but now it's time for me to start the car. And I'm going to take it for a little ride. So the ignition thing is right here. So you just put the key in, of course. Crank it to the line there, the run line. And usually before you start a car, you want to let the fuel pump prime for a second. Then you just start it up. A, A. And just wait for annoying beeping to stop. So now the radio is on, and you yeah, now showing all my miles and everything. This does have quite a few features with it, so I'm gonna just scroll through them real quick. So you can change it to English, Spanish, or French. Display. You can just make it display metric if you want to. Then it switches kilometers. Now we're there. But of course, I want all miles per hour because this is America. And daytime enhancement makes the screen go like bright, but I don't like how it looks like that. Then this is to reset the engine oil monitor. You don't want to do this unless you just change the oil. Cause duh, the tire inflation monitor. I had to adjust this a lot when I was having a tire flat, which actually I might be able to show you the plug on that real quick. I'm gonna show that in a little bit. 
All right, so I just forgot to record the part where, like, I show where the, the thing that went through the tire. So here's a few pictures of it. I hope you enjoy. And there's personal programming mode, which just has, like, a bunch of other stuff here. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot on this. Then you just push this when you, if you want to just go back to looking at the miles. Also, a few things I forgot to mention as well is the knobs here for, like, the climate control. So I got air conditioning in this, which works really well. Got the, uh, I forgot what it's called, like where you cycle the air through the cabin. I, I forgot what that's called. And then got, um, of course, the fan speed. And this, of course, changes where the air blows. How, like, warm or hot you, or uh, how cold and hot you want it. So that's pretty cool. Then I got the traction control button there, which I don't think works. But traction control does work, though, because I have driven this in ice, and it just started to lose control and the car just all of a sudden gained control and this like came up said traction control device on all right and now for me to try and climb in the back seat all right so in the back seat i just keep like a few hats back here and stuff and my weed socks i was looking for them so i got a blanket here so in case it gets cold and you know i have a passenger and they don't want to have a blanket on they can she just climb in the back seat and you're just like yeah there's not a ton of leg room but nobody really sits back here I mean, you can't really ex expect too much legroom either because literally the windshield is right above your head. Hold on, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, it's like right above my head. I got like, I had a bump. Boink. Man, here's the window controls here. I don't know if they're on right now. Okay, yeah, they are. And it goes all the way down. That's pretty cool. Doesn't have like the safety locks on it or anything. And there's also lights back here, which I actually forgot about these. I never, I never sat back here before and I've only sat in a passenger seat once. So Just turn these on and cool. They light up. They light up. And there's also um some storage over here there's a net here just because why not i guess it's for you like put like books in or like notes in or, or uh, phones in or whatever i don't actually know what this does i never actually opened this before all right that just seems to go into the seat there but i don't i'm not quite sure what that does like i'm like if you know, guys know just let me know because I, I don't really know exactly what this does it looks like there's cables here or something probably like adjust the seat somehow but i'm not quite sure all right, and if you want to, if you want to get in the back seat or uh, get behind the back seat, you just do this. I also got my nerds guy here. I'm just putting him over here to get him out of the way so he doesn't fall. So just pull that. And the seats come down. You can get extra trunk storage back here. And this also comes down, and there's another seat belt there. I think it's for, like, if you want to use the middle seat, but, like, I never have anybody sitting in the middle seat, so just put that there just in case. All right, but anyway, that's it with the tour, so now... Let's take it for a little ride. Also, I forgot to mention as well, when you turn the key, that turns on too, same like the Y track. And I think that has to do with the speedometer or something because it's like very pretty. All right, so now we're on the road. I'm gonna take it down the back road real quick and I'm gonna hit the gas. I'm not gonna speed or anything. I'm just gonna hit the gas and go, wow, this thing's so powerful. And regret it because I'm gonna have to fill up the car in a second because I had a half tank. All right, here you are now approaching the stoplight. It's gonna wait for it to turn green real quick. The tires do spin out too, so usually when I floor it, and I, because I can't really afford new tires right now, I'm just, I just like touch the gas and like let it get up to like 10 there and then go. Yep. Yeah, this car is pretty quick. It's not the fastest car I've driven. The fastest car I've driven was my mom's car. I think she has zero to 60 in like four and a half seconds. This is like seven and a half, so it's still fairly quick for a V6. Also, another, like, thing that I'm not really too passionate about in this car is the handling. Like, it's very loose feeling, and I know it's really common with General Motors cars, but it's a very loose feeling car. Like, you just do this, and just, that, just, uh, steering wheel has, like, no resistance to it. And to me, I'm just, like, I don't really like that because you feel like you have no control over the car, but, yeah. And another thing that's a bit lacking on this car as well, and I've seen people say this online, is the brakes aren't particularly great. Like, you have to push the brakes pretty hard to stop go around like a tight corner like this and this car doesn't really take corners that well because it's not really built to all right let's see yeah this car is a lot of fun to drive but now i'm not gonna do any like stupid driving for like a week because yeah gas costs as much as hennessy a gallon now all right but anyway i want to start like don't want to talk about some of the features of this car real quick so like, I want to give some ratings on it. So, like, driving it, 
I'd rate it like an eight because it's it's really quick, but it just has the braking and steering thing where it just feels very loose and it's braking isn't particularly great. There's a guy on lawnmower up here, but um, that's why I'm looking straight too. I can't look at the camera because yeah, there's a lot of people in this area. And uh, let's see, what else we got reliability. Reliability is also really solid too. It's um because the engine's one of the best set. Chevy ever made because I think this has a Chevy engine in it. I don't know if it's General Motors or Chevy or General Motors as a whole or Chevy that like gave it the Pontiac because you know it was a whole company. But I think it's I give it like a I actually give it a 10 out of 10 because it's fuel efficient, especially for a V6 for its size. It's very reliable and if it sounds very great, it doesn't burn oil like the 3.4 to 3.1 does. And uh yeah, what what else can I talk about? Now I'm at a stoplight. Also, the practicality of it as well is really good. The trunk space, you have a ton of trunk space. It's like trunk space you see in Dreams. The, um, there is a decent amount of leg room up here. It's pretty good amount of leg room. You can move around and stuff. In the back, it's kind of like meh, but I don't care. I'm not sitting back there. I don't know. I'd say it's probably about like 7 out of 10 for practicality. Then with like features and stuff, with the new radio in it and everything, I'd give it a 10 because I listen to whatever music I want to without getting one of those like little wireless things that like give off a radio signal also another like kind of flawless car has too is it um the transmission is a four-speed automatic so like when you're driving on the highway if you're doing like 80 then the rpms are gonna be fairly high like you're probably be hanging around like 2500 rpms and like in the car that's like a five or six speed you'll probably be hanging around like 1800 or so so the four speed is kind of like kind of like mad but I, you know what it, it gets me around and it shifts clear uh, cleanly and everything so everything's good with this car and also another thing i'm going to mention as well is i have a bit of a cooling issue with this car so like it runs a tiny bit too cold so my plan is i'm going to take it into school and get it fixed like i can just do because i can just do it myself because i take auto shop at school so i can just fix the thermostat or temperature sensor whatever it is that needs to be fixed myself it should be fairly easy but yeah, that's it with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I don't know, I'll see you around. I don't know what I'll be uploading next. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.